Hey everyone, it's Nikki and welcome to my kitchen. So this past week I wanted to try homemade vanilla wafers. These were the final three and that's the original above and at the end I'll reveal which one was my favorite. The first recipe I tried was King Arthur baking. Now I chose King Arthur because number one, their recipes are foolproof, but secondly because I wanted to select three recipes that were kind of different. Now, you can't get two crazy differences with a vanilla wafer, right? They all have sugar, butter, vanilla, flour. But this one had something a little different. It had a vinegar in it and an egg white and also baking soda. So I thought, hmm, let's see how the vinegar changes the flavor. The second recipe, cannot remember the name now for some reason, but check the description below. I'll include the link. This one was the, I would say, required the least amount of moisture. As you can see, the only added liquid besides like the vanilla and the butter is going to be an egg. So I wanted to see kind of what that did to the cookie. And then the final one I chose had no reviews and so I was a little nervous about that, but it used heavy whipping cream and I'm a huge fan of heavy whipping cream. So I wanted to see how that made the cookie taste. And this one's very similar to the second recipe, except for the heavy whipping cream and, of course, the amounts of things. All right. Now, all of these recipes pretty much follow the same pattern. You measure out your dry ingredients. Um, for the King Arthur, it didn't want you to. It wanted you to add the baking powder and the salt to the other mixture. But for the most part, you kept all of that in the glass bowl, like with the flour. And then you're going to beat together sugar and butter. Once that was fully combined, you would add the vanilla and the eggs. Um, and then when all of that was combined, then you would add the dry stuff. So here's the sugar and butter. And it's getting a little bit creamier, so I'm going to add the eggs and the vanilla. And in this case, it was vinegar. And then finally, you add the flour. All right, here's batch one's dough. I don't know if you would call, I guess you would call it dough, but it kind of reminds me of a cake batter. Um, scooping it out. I don't have like that good of a cookie scooper, so I'm just using this little teaspoon cooker. A scoop, I mean teaspoon measuring and putting it on a stone baking sheet because honestly that's my favorite way to bake cookies. And they all, they were all at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then halfway through you would rotate the pan. All right, first batch is going into the oven. Let's see how they turn out. First batch is done. Now, these recipes, they want you to flatten the cookie dough before you bake it. Don't flatten it. Don't worry about it. They they kind of flatten out in the oven. They're not the most beautiful things, but I don't care how they look. All right, dough number two is ready to go into the oven as soon as I'm done dropping it on the cookie stove, cookie stone. So dough number two was a little bit more yellower and I like trying the dough before I put it in the oven and I would say it did not taste as well as dough number one. Okay, here they go. Let's see how they turn out. All right, these were much flatter, but looking pretty good. You cook them until you see like brown on the edges. There I am trying to scoop some out. And here's dough number three. It was definitely the whitest one, but also pretty thick. I think because it just called for more sugar and flour in it. All right, dough number three is going into the oven. Let's see how these bad boys turn out. Okay, they're done. Now, my camera's lighting is not the best, but these were much wider than any of the other ones, and they were thicker. Here are all three of them lined up together, trying to show you the comparison of them all. Um, the first one, second batch, and then the third batch. Uh, see the first one here? It's got a lot more like air pockets and bubbles. I kind of like that. Second one was a lot more thinner. And then the third one, they're like biscuity almost. But there they are. All right, here I, um, I have all three of, of the ones I made. We've got, oh gosh, I, number one, number two, number three. 
Um, now, I did go ahead and try each of them when they were hot, but you have to compare them when they're, you know, cooled off to compare them like a vanilla wafer. So, here's number one. Number one, you can hear my son in the background. He's eating them. Very soft and like very airy. I don't know if you can, I don't know where the video is at, recorder on this. Oh, it's not that good of a, it's my phone. So it's not a good recorder. Okay, number two. Definitely more crackery, like a vanilla wafer. Flavor's good though. Number three. Mm, number three. Very crack, crunchy exterior, but soft interior. But the flavor is not as good. Um, I forgot to show the inside of number two. Inside of number three. I think my favorite one is number one. Mm. It's just King Arthur's recipe. Best one. Alright, to be fair. I need to try a real vanilla wafer. Got a black spot on the bottom. I can eat that one. Okay. It's just not as good, you know? Vanilla wafers are good, but you can just almost taste that it's it's not as real. You look at the recipe box. High fructose corn syrup. That's why I'm making it. I'm making a homemade version. It's got canola oil in it too. All right. Well, uh, give it, give uh, these recipes a try.